So as my, uh, the teacher who introduced me to marine ecology said uh, during his first class, you can't enjoy the game, watching the game, unless you know who the players are. We need to figure out who is at the top of the food web, visiting our reefs when the tide floods in that are ultimately affecting the behavior and the densities of our things at the bottom of the food web. We're deploying a couple of different kinds of traps to just quantify the diversity of fishes and crabs that might be lurking around our oyster reefs. Okay guys. Pot is empty. And crab trap one was empty. We're gonna bust the dock today with our uh, <laughs> got it right. with our catch. What we found uh, in our crab traps is that we weren't really getting any blue crabs, um, which is what I was expecting. They were all empty. Awesome. These guys are much slower than the blue crabs. Blue crabs are just very fast and vicious, but if these guys get a hold of you, you'll lose a finger. We were catching in our small baitfish minnow pods a lot of small juvenile uh, fishes. I think they were croaker and penfish and perch. We'll ID those back at the lab, um, which is cool because they're using the reef as refuge from larger predatory fishes, and uh, they're also um, using it as a feeding ground to eat amphipods and, and worms living amongst the oysters. 52. For each of the fish, we were doing two things. One, we were sort of recording who they are and what was their size, how big were they. Were they really big or, or really small? Um, and then for each new species of fish, we were taking samples that we can then analyze for stable isotopes. So catfish, they were the big surprise for me. Uh, typically, when I think of catfish, I think of you know really fresh water, a uh, very muddy environment, and uh, I was surprised to see them so abundant. Definitely the most dominant fish in our oyster reefs. 